I'm Haley and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about body sprays. So I have nine body sprays right in front of me that I purchased over the course of this past summer. And right now I'm going to be ranking them all, talking about whether I think they're worth it, whether I think body sprays in general are worth it, kind of the rise of body sprays over the last few years and just some of my general thoughts on the topic. So if this is something you're interested in hearing more about, I hope you'll keep on watching. Okay, so I have a confession to make. First of all, before this summer, I don't think I had ever had or bought a body spray. I have been a lifelong lover and wearer of perfumes. Even from a young age, I always wore like eau de toilettes. I have always worn just perfume. And I know a lot of people are super into body sprays, especially from places like Bath and Body Works, Victoria's Secret, Sol de Janeiro, things like that. And I've noticed that over the past few years, uh, body sprays has become as hyped in their new releases as perfume releases so I kind of fell down the rabbit hole of body sprays over this past summer and when one would release I would pick it up because I wanted to review it because I wanted to be in on the hype um, for a variety of reasons um, and what I've come to realize is I just think I'm not a body spray girl which is totally fine it's totally fine if you are into body sprays but Today I'm going to be ranking the nine body sprays I have in front of me and just sharing my thoughts on the ones that I liked, the ones that I didn't, and whether I think they're worth it. So for me, as somebody who loves perfumes and has always worn perfumes, I feel like body sprays are kind of just a stopgap. You know, if there's something that I really want in a perfume, I should just save up and buy the perfume instead of buying a body spray that may be weaker, less long wearing, and less of a fun experience for me. So that's just my own personal view. I think I kind of fell for a lot of hype with some of these, especially from brands like Sol de Janeiro where they have these limited edition uh, body sprays that kind of create a lot of hype. So going forward, I'm going to try and be more mindful with my body spray purchases. I also think that sometimes there's this idea that because it's a body spray, it's super mass appealing and easy to wear, so it's totally fine to blind buy, and they're harder to get samples and decants of versus actual perfumes but I think going forward I need to apply my perfume buying mentality which is where I always try and try before I buy and try and pick up samples and decants before committing to a full-size bottle just because the body spray is less expensive doesn't mean I should you know just blind buy buy a bunch at once not knowing if I like them or not and I think sometimes the lower price point encourage us us to be less mindful with our spending because if something is in the 10 to $30 range, it feels more of just like a throwaway purchase. But if you are mindful and uh, don't buy nine body sprays, I could have bought a whole size a bottle of perfume for that uh, amount that I spent on the body sprays. So all that to say, let's get an into our ranking. Okay, so coming in at the bottom of the list in spot number nine, this might be surprising, but this is a Bath & Body Works Ice Lemon Pound Cake. I just really do not like the scent of this in the body spray formulation. So I've tried the candle, the hand spray, the shower gel. I really enjoyed all of them. Uh, but just the balance of the notes in those is quite a bit different to my nose than in the body spray and especially in the body cream. So the notes here are sugary glazed icing, pure lemon zest, and fluffy pound cake. And this is super, super heavy on the cake note. And it's just a overly sweet, very artificial gourmand scent that I just don't love and don't love on myself. Uh, like I said, I really like the shower gel. I have it open right now, but it it's more of that brighter citrus and less of that fake lingering cake note. And I had also opened the body cream recently and the cake note is even worse in the body cream. So I feel like this is just a lesson that just because I like something from Bath & Body Works in one formula, I should not blind buy 
um, the other formula because if I had smelled this in the store, I would not have picked it up. I think I got swept away in the, you know, the madness of the semi-annual sale because this was less than $5 and I just overbought and, you know, wasn't thoughtful in my purchases. And I feel like this is something that I will eventually pass along to someone else. It's not something I enjoy wearing and I really, really do not like this fake cake overly sweet overly artificial no in this body spray okay in spot number eight i have sol de janeiro's carioca crush so this came out this summer in the trio of limited edition summer body sprays that they tend to do every summer i was super excited to pick up the set because i feel like i I felt like there was so much hype around these summer releases that I felt like I missed out in previous years, especially because, you know, after the fact, people were like, oh, I really love this one or that one, um, but they're no longer available. So I really fell for hype, like I was saying, and I picked up all three of them. And this was definitely my least favorite. Uh, so this one has notes of crisp pear, pink violet, and white cedar wood. And it just doesn't do it for me. It's really generic and really forgettable. And it's a little bit sweet, a little bit fruity, but it just really nothing to write home about. I just feel like it's really, like I said, forgettable. It's not something I crave. It's not something I want to wear. It's not unpleasant. Like I feel like the ice lemon pound cake is veering on actively unpleasant to me, but this one is more just, it's not a favorite. I would not repurchase it. And if I could find a home with a friend or somebody for this, I would happily give it to them if it was something that I knew they would enjoy. So next year, I'm going to only purchase these and only purchase body sprays in general if it's something that I know I have tried out and enjoyed. Okay, so in spot number seven, I have also from Bath & Body Works, Cotton Candy Clouds. And again, this is one where the formula makes all the difference because I really like this in the body cream. I've used up like three of them over the past few years. It's something I look forward to at the semi-annual sale, but I just don't like it in the body spray as much. So the fragrance notes are spun sugar, pink berries and whipped vanilla and I feel like the body spray is a lot sharper than the body cream and I feel like just the underlying like you know base ingredients in the body cream just make it so much creamier and more like whip the whipped cream vanilla just really luscious and super sweet and creamy vibe whereas this is more of the uh, pink berries and it's just really sharp and synthetic to me so I tried wearing this uh, a bit during the summer I really love cotton candy scents so I thought this would be an easy reach for me but I just don't like it especially when compared to other um, cotton candy perfumes that I already have and enjoy so for example, Skylar's Boardwalk Delight is something that I would reach for every time over this. Like, I don't really feel like this has a place in my collection because I have actual perfumes um, in a similar, you know, fragrance family as this that I just know I'll reach for. So that's another thing. You know, if something is duping something in my collection, why wouldn't I just reach for the perfume is at least my mode of thinking. Uh, so for this one, again, just really not loving it. I did buy it for under $5 in the semi-annual sale, but again, not one of my favorites. Okay, so the last three that I went over were all ones that I would not repurchase and I don't really enjoy wearing, but the next four that I'm gonna talk about are all kind of interchangeable in their rankings. I like all of these. They're not go-tos, but they are the kind of fragrances that I like reaching for before the gym or any time where I don't wanna have an overpowering fragrance. And I feel like that's where body sprays do have their place. So when you're not trying to make a huge statement, but you do wanna smell good and smell put together, I feel like body sprays, for me at least, have their place. I also like putting them on before bed because longevity doesn't really matter as much in that situation. Um, but the first that I'm gonna talk about coming in at number six is the Sol de Janeiro Beijos de Sol. This one has notes of peach skin, coconut milk, and frangipani petals. And to me, this one just smells generically tropical and generically fruity. I do smell that coconut, um, but this is just fun. It's summery. 
Um, I had thought this would be my favorite out of the trio of summer limited edition releases from Sol de Janeiro. There is one more in this uh, collection that I'm going to talk about later in the video that I ended up enjoying more. But the thing is with this one, as much as I like it in theory, I'm just not reaching for it. I think because I'm kind of burnt out on body sprays, I just at the point in the summer where it would make sense to wear this most, I just wasn't reaching for it and I wasn't feeling it. Um, and I think again, you know, it's great that this is a smaller bottle um, because, you know, it's just, again, a little bit forgettable to me. It's just generically tropical. While I do think this would be fun to potentially wear on vacation, it's not one that I'm super drawn to or would repurchase. Coming in at number five is another Bath & Body Works body spray, and that is Cucumber Melon. I really just bought this for nostalgia, but I did end up enjoying it more than I thought I would. And I really like throwing this on before the gym, especially in the early morning. I felt like it was just fun to do a quick spritz of this to feel good and fresh and, you know, smelling good before heading out the door for the gym, especially on warmer days. So I do enjoy this one. It's not one that I'm going to be reaching for on a regular basis, but I do think it is fun to have a few things in my collection that are just like nostalgic, even though they're not ones that I'm gonna be wearing regularly. Although I do have a decent dent in this, um, considering that I bought it, you know, just a couple months ago. So I have been wearing it, I have been enjoying it. Like I said, it's more for nostalgia's sake because this smells super, you know, late 90s, early 2000s to me, and it's a scent that I enjoy for that reason. Coming in at number four, this is Sol de Janeiro's Chirosa 48. So I believe this is a re-release of one of their limited edition summer body sprays from a previous year. Uh, but this one has notes of fresh guava nectar, sunlit orchid, and sensuous pink musk. So I really just smell pure sweet guava when I smell this uh, body spray. It's really pretty and really nice and really fun and very, very, very youthful. So to me, this smells like uh, a body spray that would be at Justice or Limited 2 or a store like that uh, for a preteen. And I think this would be perfect for somebody in that age range, a daughter, a niece, somebody like that. For me, it just dissipates so, so quickly. So obviously that's sort of the thing with body sprays in general, but this one really only lasts like 15 minutes before I either go nose blind or it just dissipates completely. So for that reason, this is pretty low on the list uh, compared to how much I actually like the scent. I just feel like it doesn't stay, there's no scent bubble, there's really no experience around this apart from when you first spray. So for me, I feel like I would rather have my fragrances linger longer and I feel like this is just more of a very, very one note, very short lived experience and that's just not what I want for my fragrances. And then in the number three spot, I have Sweetheart Cherry from Bath & Body Works. So I really love the scent of this. The notes are wild cherry, crushed pistachio, and whipped vanilla. I think it's pretty, I enjoy wearing it, but because I already own Tom Ford Lost Cherry, I'm gonna reach for the Tom Ford every time. I just feel like the Tom Ford is more nuanced, more layered, more rounded, and just a better all over experience and has amazing longevity. Whereas I feel like this is kind of like a pale imitation of the Tom Ford. I think it's really fun. I think it's obviously, it's about a, a hundredth of the price. If I bought this for $4.50 during the semi-annual sale and a large bottle of Tom Ford is probably $450. I don't know if I did the math right on that, but um. You know, it smells good, but again, I'm always gonna reach for the better experience if I already have that in my collection. So that's why this is ranked number third, but I do think it's fun. I do think it's pretty and I do enjoy it. I'm going to keep it and try and get some wear on it, especially in February, the month of love. Um, but like I said, I love, love, love my Tom Ford. Another thing to note on this is I had the body cream and it has already gone bad. Even though I just bought it a couple months ago in the semi-annual sale, the longevity is just not there on the body creams and it really smells so, so bad. I'll talk about it in my next empties video because I'm definitely getting rid of it, but that was super disappointing and I just feel like another example of 
sort of just quality issues with Bath and Body Works that makes me feel like I need to step back with my purchasing from them. So again, I really like this one. The body cream did not work for me. Okay, and then the last two that I have in my ranking are ones that I actively really enjoy and would, you know, finish the bottles, recommend to people, and are just ones that I have enjoyed reaching for a lot over the course of the summer. So I would say of the nine that I have here, these two are the winners, which is not a very good hit rate, and I feel like is part of the reason that I need to roll it back with my body spray purchasing. But number two, I have Sol de Janeiro Summer e Amour. Uh, this was the third in the uh, limited edition trio of body sprays that they had. The notes on this one are orange flower, creamy almond, and sunkissed woods. And I'm just really drawn to this. I feel like it's a little more perfumey, so to speak, a little more nuanced. They're just more there than with some of the other really one note uh, body sprays that Sol de Janeiro has come out with. Um, to me, this is closer to some of their more OG body sprays that they have that are just more complex, uh, you know, more to write home about than some of the other really one note uh, ones like the Cheroso 48. So I really, really enjoy this. I think it's super pretty. I definitely smell the almond and the woody notes in this. Um, and it's just one that I've really been enjoying and I could definitely see myself finishing out this bottle. I have a pretty decent dent in this and it's one that I definitely don't regret purchasing. And in the number one position, I have Fleur's Mango Mood. I absolutely love this. This is such a beautiful, truly photorealistic mango fragrance. It smells so good. It sort of has that astringent, piney quality that a real fresh mango can sometimes have while still being sweet. And just to me, it smells exactly like a fresh mango. And I really, really love that. I think this is so pretty. Like I was saying, it is a bit more nuanced and complex uh, in its photorealisticness than some of the other more synthetic, really, really one note uh, body sprays that I've talked about earlier in this video. I think it smells really quality, especially for a body spray. It's super fun to wear, super summery, and just really pretty and really, really enjoyable. One that I really enjoy reaching for. As you can see, I have my uh, dent right here is pretty decent. And this is the only one out of these nine that I have gotten compliments on just out in the world. Uh, so this one has the best, most long lastingness of the nine as well. And this is one where I feel like there is a perfume that is quite similar and that is Wilhelm Parfumery's Mango Skin. And with some of the other body sprays, I feel like it would behoove you to just save up and buy a small bottle of the perfume that it is most compared to. Whereas this one, I feel like I was able to just say, you know what, I'm content with this one. I don't need mango skin. After all, I'm really, really enjoying this and I love wearing it. So take that as you will. I really like this. I think it's really nice. It's quality and it is the body spray that I could see myself reaching for the most out of the nine here. Um, so this one is the winner. I think it's really beautiful. And just comparing this to this first place versus last place, there are a world of difference. And I feel like this kind of just shows me that there are body sprays that are worth it. There are body sprays that are super good quality, lasting and really pretty. So I will keep that in mind when I'm thinking about or purchasing body sprays going forward, let me know in the comments down below. Do you like body sprays? Do they replace perfumes in your collection? Are they a stopgap for if you are saving up for a perfume? Are they more of an impulse purchase like they have been with me? Or have you fallen for the hype again like I have? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, and as always, I hope you'll stick around and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. Bye.